Welcome all to Chasing Tens. My name is Abby. Thank you so much for joining me to this last episode of the Andalusia Track Day series with No Limits Track Days. Now, at the end of every Track Day series, I tend to make the last episode a little bit longer. So there is going to be a lot of footage in this video. Not only we could, we talk about tires, we talk about brakes, uh, how everything went and what kind of suits Andalusia and what doesn't. Uh, we also have a crash, unfortunately, and how we kind of get everything sorted and go back on the track. So do bear with me, get yourself a beverage because this is going to be a good one. Now, let's take you straight away to the track. I'm going to be chasing Rich, a good friend whom I met at the track day. Now, last episode, I told you how tough these Suzuki's are to overtake because of their VVT technology, you know, that variable valve thing. They are really quick on the on the straight. So I've tried to see if I can overtake them a bit differently. Uh, and, you know, I'll tell you a bit more about it when we come back. So uh, this is going to be a two minute seven. I think we finished day three on a two minute six dead. Um, so, you know, this is all about chasing tenths again rather than chasing seconds because we are on the last day. So um, it's going to be a two minute seven. It's not about lap time. This is all about uh, having a bit of a ding dong with a good friend. And I'll come back and I'll tell you a bit more about it. Okay, welcome back guys. So uh, mine and Rich's pace was pretty similar on day three slash day four morning. And then, then I think I went of a, a one and a half second quicker uh, afterwards. But the main thing I wanted to tell you here is what I'm trying to do is, uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, my bike is around 174, 175 horsepower. It's a nine year old bike. Uh, the newer bikes uh, have got 200 horsepower plus and the straight on here is pretty, pretty decent. And uh, what I'm trying to do is trying to find different places to overtake uh, safely uh, and also try to make some of the U-turns, uh, uh, fast U-turns or good, decent braking U-turns into a bit of a V because uh, Aprilia's have got decent, smooth torque. So what I'm trying to do is make it into a way. So last, uh, you know, yeah, last episode I showed you where I took Matt on the outside uh, on that and tried to make it a bit of a V and then overtake him that way. And again, Rich in the last episode, I did the same thing, kind of went deep into the turn and then came back in um, and came back in quite quick. Uh, when you come back in quite quick, it doesn't give the other person the opportunity. Uh, these quick bikes are always around the corner. Even in this one you saw, even though I overtook 
uh, reach just before the straight, he was still just here. I could see it in my kind of vision and um, you know, it's, it's hard to keep these bikes behind because they are very, very powerful. Even in this lap, I overtook Rich in a, in a very odd place, so I didn't give him the opportunity to go on the straight and make my life a bit difficult. I kind of took him before, before the straight. The reason I'm showing you this and telling you about this, this is what I've been doing in this track day, trying to make my life a bit easier uh, and overtaking people a little bit differently because uh, it is a little bit difficult when you, you are on a, say, underpowered modernish bike, uh, you know, especially my Aprilia 2015, a little bit less power, but also I've got 2011 APRC electronics. So I can't really rely on electronics too much and really take the, the piss out of corners because, you know, it'll bite me back um, in, the, uh, in the end and it did. But that was a, a different sort of crash. I'll tell you all about it in, in a bit. But one of the things I was suffering in the morning was a bit of the kind of the brake lever was coming too close to the accelerator. So had a bit of air in the system probably. So I got Matt from TBR Performance, who's with me in this track day. He sorted it out. He's got a workshop in Hungerford, so he's the perfect guy to do it. He sorted my brakes out, and after that, it was absolutely fine. So in terms of tires and brakes, I discussed tires briefly in the last video. So I'm running an SC1 front, which is now, I've actually re-looked at everything. I'm actually on the seventh day, not, I said, I thought it was fifth, but I'm on the seventh day uh, of using this SC1 front, which is not a good idea. And then I used an SC3 rear, which was gone within one and a half day, because uh, Almera and Andalusia are tough on Pirellis. Um, and so now I put on a Metzler TD since day three afternoon, and this is day four. And conditions today are a little bit cooler, unfortunately windier, uh, but cooler conditions give the Metzler TD kind of bit of a, an edge in a way, because when Metzler TD gets really, really hot, it starts to slide, um, which I don't really like, you know, but, um, you know, if it's too much sliding, it, you know, it kind of puts you off. But today's conditions are perfect for the Metzler TD. In terms of brakes, which I forgot to discuss in the last episode, I'm running the Vesra Sintered pads and Matt is running the top of the range Akosato racing slash track day pad. And the main difference I found with these uh, two compounds is number one brake dust. I mean, Matt's wheels, front wheel, uh, I should say, was absolutely fine. My wheel, you couldn't even see the carbon weave. That's the amount of dust which came out of the sintered uh, Vesra pad. But the performance of this Vesra pad is unbelievable. I think it's a Japanese company. Really, really good pad. So if you are, I mean, I've, I've used EBC GP FEX pads before great pads but produce a lot of brake uh, break this very reasonable pads are sbs dual carbons they are just fantastic you know one of the best out there is brembo 04 you can't beat them but price is a bit too high they are great so i'm trying something different now which is the vesra sintered unfortunately a bit too much brake dust so you will need to cl clean your brake calipers a bit more unfortunately that brake dust can go in your um, front suspension so you'll have to service your front forks a bit more as well so kind of a, a chain reaction of, of things can happen when you've got pads which produce a lot of brake dust but i was so surprised that the ecosato uh, ones just were not producing much brake dust at all and giving a lot of performance same thing with the tires matt was running dunlops front and back and you know what he he put brand new dunlops front and back on day one and day two, day three, day four, no problems. He did not have to change tires at all. So pers my personal thing is uh, Pirelli's and Metzler's do struggle a bit at, at Almera and Andalusia and Bridgestone and Dunlop's do a really good job. Uh, I've not tried Continentals and uh, Michelin's uh, on here, so I can't really comment on that. Let's show you another lap. Um, I've been un unfortunately suffering from an issue, which I'll tell you in a bit, not bike issue, but uh, a mental issue. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec, but here is uh, another lap. I think I shave about uh, half a second or something on that on this lap.
Welcome back everyone. So that issue I was talking about before I showed you the lap is that dreaded turn three. I mentioned that on episode one and two and three now and today is worse because it's windy and unfortunately I still can't get that corner to turn three right. And here's a little clip of Matt where he's actually taking the piss out of me because I just can't get it right. We call this Abby's corner or Abby's line because he's gone off like that about seven times today. So yeah, when we were discussing the whole kind of uh, track uh, layout thing, uh, they named that turn, uh, and the whole garage kind of named that turn on my name because I've been out on that kind of no man's land so many times. It's just one of those things I couldn't get it right and I was a bit too greedy on the throttle, so I kept going off. But I, I said in the episode one, if I got that corner right, I think I had another half a second there. But anyways, that's okay. Let me show you some lovely lunchtime footage. The lunchtime footage is very long, so I've divided that into two sections. This is the first half of it. Enjoy it. If you're not from the UK, we in the UK have amazing companies in the UK. Redline Track Days, No Limit Track Days, Focus Events, uh, Race Shift. There's a new one called Slick Track Days uh, by Lee. And, you know, they do an amazing job. And these stillages are, are, are essential for carrying two bikes. So one bike fits this way, the other bike fits that way. And you can put all your stuff, your, your picnic table, to put your stuff on, extra tires, all the stuff goes on it and you're not allowed to go any more than this height because then another stillage goes on top. That is the maximum level you can kind of fit. You do see people really putting tires and tires and tires and if anything goes above here, they are not very happy. The logistics company, which is this company, I think they're called Lee. I'll throw a massive shout out to them because the guy who runs the company is very polite. Is it Lee Galazzo and Hitchcock? So yeah, massive congratulations to these guys. Very polite people, very polite people. When you, you, you uh, so once you put your bike, you use these cling film stuff, not the black one, black is not allowed. The, the, the clear one, wrap around the bike. Um, and yeah, and everything has to be declared because after Brexit, UK is not part of the Europe, um, European Union anymore. So everything needs to be declared properly. 
So that's how it all works if you're not from the UK and it's quite a smooth transition, quite a smooth process. The bikes come before and then you follow in a flight and then you stay in a lovely hotel and that's how it all works. By the way, massive shout out to not these people. These are nice, polite, polite people. They follow me on YouTube. I know the chap in the black, but notsofast.com. So we have two coaches here uh, with us today. So we've got Gary Walton from notsofast.com. If you remember at Aragon, uh, when I was in a bit of a black hole after my crash um, at my last race, which was uh, not last race, uh, my third last race, which was the Angle C uh, No Limits um, Endurance Race. And I had a huge eyesight. I was in a bit of a black hole. I hadn't ridden a bike for 12 months. I went to Aston. I was really slow. I come to Aragon and Gary Walton speaks to me for about half an hour and gives me a massive pep talk. And I go really quick. And we also, so massive shout out to Gary Walton. We've also got Dean Ellison in today. So Dean Ellison is a British superbike rider. He's won many races uh, in different categories. So many categories and stuff like that. And he's here, he works with Lone Limits. He's a really fast rider. And guess what? I'm gonna show you some footage now of Dean Ellison taking us around the circuit. Fully insured, this was a No Limits thing. You could actually sit in the car uh, and Dean Ellison will take you around the circuit in a car, not a very powerful car, but he is throwing the car left, right, center. I was only managed to record a tiny bit of it. I'll put that footage now on, on, uh, on the screen and then I'll come back in a, sh uh, in a bit. So welcome back guys. Yeah, that was Dean Ellison taking us around the track. We were three guys, four guys in the car holding on for dear life. I could only record a little bit because I had to hold something because we were just all over the place. He was giving everything in that car. So Dean Ellison is a British superbike rider or was a British superbike rider. His brother James Ellison was also a British superbike rider and really quick guy. And best thing is alongside being really, really quick, he's also a very good coach. A lot of quick people can sometimes not, with all due respect to them, can sometimes are not, can sometimes not translate everything on the track on a piece of paper or explain it to you nicely. But people like Gary Walton or, or Dean Ellison, you know, these two guys who are here with us and we are blessed to have them alongside Simon Crafer, who comes here as well. These people can really coach you well, really, really well. So we are really grateful to have these kind of people with us on this circuit. And you know what? You can go to them for help. They will help you. They will give you verbal instructions of some things. They don't say to you, oh, you know, my time costs, I don't know, 20 pounds, five, five minutes is for 20 pounds. They don't do anything like that. They always help you if you ask them a question. So never be shy of asking these people questions about where you're struggling, what you can do better. Or if you're like me in a bit of a mindset kind of uh, quicksand. And I was thinking left, right, center, and Gary Bolton got me out of it. Anyways, let's move to some track footage. Welcome back guys, hope you liked that footage. Let me now show you the lap where I crashed, unfortunately. Pretty, pretty pathetic crash really, because it shouldn't have really happened. I should be a bit more clever. Uh, I think I'll show you two laps, but um, altogether I did about four or five laps and they were all um, two minute five, two minute five, two minute five, and this was a uh, two minute 5.2. And then as I was starting the last lap of the session, um, I unfortunately crashed. So uh, I completed that particular lap, which was my fastest one. And then I just lost the front when I was starting uh, another lap. So I'll tell you all about it once you come back, because it's a bit, bit of a silly crash. But uh, let me see what you make out of it.
Welcome back guys. So unfortunately, yes, that was the crash. First things first, what I want to show you is my demeanor, my body language and the things I actually say or don't say. Let me show you when I crash on day two, let me show you what I did and I'll come back. What are you doing? So as you can see, I was quite articulate. I was really upset with myself. I was screaming because that was um, a crash where the red flag had just come out as I was going on the uh, start finish straight. And I looked at it and I missed my braking marker. And it was a gentle crash. But I was really upset with myself because the bike was gleaming. It was fantastic. And I just made a, a silly mistake and I could have saved it. I nearly saved it and I didn't. And I was really angry. Here, let me show you what happens as soon as I crash. So as you saw there, not a single word was uttered by me, not a single noise was made. I just quietly came and tried to pick my bike up. In the previous one, I was hitting my bike, I was upset, I was screaming. The reason I was so calm and collected because I had a feeling that I would crash. Not only my tri front tire was seven days old, uh, the rear tire was okay, uh, but I lost the front, um, you know, and uh, I lost the front um, I, oh, I forgot to bring my shoe. I left it in the garage. I was going to bring my shoe because not only I leaned a bit too much, my foot pegs are really high. I hardly ever knee down. I think knee, knee downs are kind of overrated anyways, but I am a short guy. I'm five feet, seven and a half, but my foot pegs are really high. So I hardly ever knee down anyways. And my toe hardly ever touches the floor. My toe touches the floor. Um, and obviously my toe slider is completely gone from the front and I, the shoe is in the garage, I forgot to bring it. But, um, but at the same point, I knew I had leaned a bit too much and I had a feeling something might happen and it just happened and I crashed and I was so calm because in a way I was ex expecting it because I was taking the piss. I was really, even the trainer on day three told me, you are right on the edge, um, you know, he goes, you're doing great, uh, you know, your same lap time, I, I was the same lap time as the trainer, we were both on two minute 5.8 on day three, uh, but um, I was just a bit on the edge, and this is what I said on day three as well, I think when I start doing well on the track, this is where I need to calm down, hunker down, and just take things slowly, here, I should have missed a session or two. I got greedy because it was the last day. I really wanted, I was at two minute 5.2 and two minute five dead according to No Limit because they do it, uh, uh, that I've got the GPS marker before the start finish gantry. They've got it somewhere else. So according to their records, I was on two minute five dead and I knew that. I just wanted to be under that two minute five and I got a bit greedy and I should have changed my front tire. Someone was giving me, a, a used a nearly a kind of new SC1 uh, and I should have taken that and should have missed a session or two. I mean, I missed a session kind of sorting my bike out anyways. We we really sorted the bike out. Big shout out to uh, Jason Cherry, Mr. Fibbit. Um, a big shout out to David March and Matt Wren for sorting my bike out. I was sorting something out, but I wasn't doing much, I can tell you. But they, these guys, I mean, I mean oh, the only thing was the clip on was bent and the foot peg was gone. Everything else was a bit okay. One of the, the fasteners was gone, so cable tie job. But the bike looked, the bike looked pretty okay in the end. Um, you know, the gravel went a bit here and there, which I wasn't very happy about. Uh, but yeah, it, I have got so much crash protection on this bike, it's unreal. 
and it did the job and bike looked pretty good and I was out again but going back to the thing again I should have chained the tire I should not have been greedy and you know even Dean Ellison said to me because he was behind me you might have seen on that lap Dean Ellison let me go Dean Ellison is the coach and he told me he goes mate you were doing so well and you should know better and I should know better because I make tire videos telling people about heat cycles pressures and all sorts of things and I just got a bit greedy and this is a lesson to be learned for future not to do that um, you know so uh, I don't mind crashing but it's just not a nice feeling because if you don't crash you don't learn and sometimes you you know you only crash sometimes if you're doing uh, a decent job and um, I am a bit on the ragged edge sometimes and just need to calm that down and 2024 is going to be all about learning and coaching and kind of less track days more coaching so let me now show you a bit more footage because uh, we we've, we've been on a downer now so let me show you a bit more fun footage from around the track uh, with uh, with all the guys and all the bikes and I'll come back and I'll show you the last two laps Okay guys, welcome back. Time to show you the last two laps. The reason I'm showing you these, they're not any faster than 2 minute 5 dead, uh, but they are around 2 minute 6.2, I think, something like this, if I can remember. But um, I think one of, on the laps I was following Matt Wren and then he gives up the lap, like he, I think he goes too wide and I nearly went into the back of him, you'll see that, oh God. And I think Matt was really adamant um, that I should go out on the last session, last session of four days to really make sure number one the bike's okay i'm feeling okay and mentally i've got no gremlins and you know what he was spot on went out there same old tires uh, but i wasn't trying to push really hard and that's one of the things dean ellison told me he goes look mate i know you were on the old tires you should know better you can still ride old tires you know sc1 plenty of heat cycles and all that but you can't push them to get really really good laps you, can, you know I, I was already fourth best out of 126 people there i don't have a, any screenshot of it because of gdpr and stuff they didn't let me take a screenshot of their computer but that's not the point the point is i was just trying to be a bit more greedy 
And that's what Dean Ellison said. He goes, if you've got old tires, you can use them, but don't push them too, too hard. So in this last session, you know, I just do two laps and they are around two minutes six. But uh, the good thing is I was confident. I was I still went out, no mental gremlins, came back and I was pretty happy. Welcome back guys. Now I'm going to show you some amazing cinematic footage of us leaving the track and having some fun. Uh, we went to a, a lovely steakhouse uh, with, the, with some other lads in the garage, uh, the Fibbit group I call them. And then me, Matt and David, we went to the town centre near the airport and we had some fun. Uh, a bit of a drive to the airport, but we had some fun. But just to throw a line, because some people were asking about the hotel, the hotel was called the Royal Hotel. Uh, this was through No Limits. And uh, I think even when you come with, I've only been to Almera with 
uh, focus events and I've been to Andalusia with no limits. Um, so in both the cases, the hotels were three, uh, not three, 30 minutes to max 40 minutes away. And, uh, you know, facilities are fantastic. Hotels are great, especially this no limits hotel was just absolutely stunning. You know, swimming pool, Irish bar, you name it. It had everything. It was a stunning place. So, um, you know, if you guys want to do Andalusia, with no limits with any company, you know, that we've got some fantastic track day companies in the UK, you know, so, uh, you know, they're all fantastic. You know, I've never, I've used focus events uh, three times, never had a problem. Redline uh, three times, no, never had a problem, no limits. Um, yet to use race shift and slick events. I'd love to have a track day with them. And uh, there's one more company I forgot, Track Dudes, uh, something. They do a bit of drone footage as well, which I used in one of the videos, um, you know, so it was brilliant. So, um, okay, time to show you some cinematic footage. All in all, this track day was brilliant. Got my confidence back, <clears throat> you know, from my old gremlins from 2022 Anglesey High Side. Um, you know, I, I feel really confident. I'm not yearning to go out on the track, to be honest. Uh, I'm going through a remortgage anyway, so I'm, I'm kind of taking it easy. Um, and, um, you know, I'm just trying to, um, just going to try to take a lot of coaching now. Um, I've, I know I've got the pace uh, for the upper fast group, uh, but I just need to now um, fin bring a bit more finesse, a uh, bit more panache, a bit more kind of um, smoothness into my riding. Uh, you know, something I learned from Matt Wren, you know, he does a two minute three and a half, two minute three, and he's so smooth. Tires look fantastic, you know, brakes look great, bikes look, bike looks great, you know, he just, you know, he comes home in one piece, unlike me. So, yeah. A lot to learn and uh, but it was a great event enjoy this cinematic footage i really hope you like it i love making these videos and i love to portray them in the best way possible possible mainly cinematically take care look after yourself bye bye